Hello everyone. Today we're going to be reviewing the Yesu 857D as part of my Summits on the Air radio comparison. We've covered the 817 so far. Next is, well, today we're going to be doing the 857D. So strap in and hang on. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. Okay, just a quick overview of the radio before we hit the field and try this thing out. Um, the Yaesu is an all-band, multi-mode, portable QRO transceiver. Um, it's actually my preferred QRO transceiver. I got a couple of them that I take out in the field. Uh, this and the 891, which we're going to cover in the next video. Um, but it's it, by Q, when I say QRO, I mean it puts out 100 watts. So it's a shack in a box basically. I run uh, HF through it mainly, but I have tried it with uh, VHF 2 meter. Um, it's rugged, it's reliable, it has a really nice sound, um, and I'll hopefully maybe uh, get into a little bit of a comparison with the 891 because it sounds just a little bit better. Um, the speaker is on top. The, other big thing about this radio is it pairs really well with the MFJ 939 uh, automatic antenna tuner. Um, it's a perfect match, pun intended, right? So um, the it, it's good for soda when you don't mind carrying heavy heavier gear. I've put it in a backpack and uh, actually taken it out a few times. I carried my 891, which is just about as heavy. Um, for over a year. So this is a radio that you can take portable. Um, it is a bit heavier and we'll get into that and why. Um, but it's great for POTA and um, my vacation home as well. So I'll take it up there and plug it in as a more permanent solution for chasing from the house. Um, it has SSB, CW, digital, FM. It has a ton of capabilities in it. But the other big thing about it is it has two mechanical filters in it from Collins. Uh, one for a sideband and the other one for CW. Gives you a really great um, filtering capability as in and in addition to that it has a uh, digital noise uh, bandpass filters and noise reduction <laughs> reduction reduction as well. So um, the other thing I'll say about it, just in general, is most of the buttons that I use out in the field and at home are pretty much right on the unit um, available. You do have to drop into the menu once in a while to change something, but for the most part, general operating from a summit or a park, um, everything you need is right there on the buttons on the radio. So let's check this guy out in the field. Um, I did it up by Alpine, Arizona uh, in the springtime, as you'll see. Good morning. Um, all right, we're going to take the 857 up to Noble Mountain, uh, which is just to the um, north of Alpine, Arizona. Got a little bit of water here, a little bit of snow out. Um, a little bit of water coming down this creek here. And a little bit of snow, but uh, just patchy. Kind of a cloudy day. So I don't know. We're not supposed to get any rain, but we got a little bit, just enough to raise the dust yesterday. So anyway, we're going to head up here. Noble Mountain is pretty much a drive up. To get to the pin, you do have to hike over to it. But uh, the road goes right through the activation zone, which makes this perfect for a heavier soda um, expedition. Um, also, I mean, clearly this would be a great radio for POTA as well, um, as we discussed. So we're going to set this thing up. I'll show you, um, I mean, certainly there's an endless number of uh, configurations that you can set your station up with, especially, um, but it, it, they have to support 100 watts if that's how much power you want to run out of the radio. So you can't be running little tiny uh, stuff designed for 10 watts. But uh, yeah, 
we're going to set up a station here and uh, we'll get on the air shortly after we get up on the mountain. Uh, so this drive up Soda Summit turned out to be a bit of a hike and uh, although not far, we don't have far to go from the car, uh, you can probably see back there, but this is the reason. Um, it's not much, but I don't have the clearance and it looks like somebody got stuck down here. So rather than get in here and get stuck, um, we'll just walk the rest of the way. It's probably, I don't know, a quarter mile or something from here. So yeah, get out and do a little bit of walking. You ready to go, Ray? Let's go. She's pretty stoked. I didn't have her pack today because I wasn't planning on doing any hiking. She's already got her morning hike in though. So, we'll, uh, we'll get up to the top here and see if we can get, get her done. What do you think, Ray? I think it's pretty awesome. We're just about 9,500 feet. Soda Goat says we're in the activation zone. Uh, the pin would be just right over here. Pretty much flat, kind of that little tiny ridge there and voila. <clears throat> we're gonna set up here uh, next to the road where I normally set up. And uh, so I did bring my backpack because it has other stuff I didn't want to forget um, and water. We hiked about a half mile from the car so it really wasn't that big a deal. That one little spot, if I could have gotten through there, would have been awesome, but hey, um, I enjoyed the hike, actually, it's great. Um, this is day two at elevation, so I'm puffing just a little bit. Let's take a look at the station uh, configuration here. I didn't zip the bag up, but um, it's about 13 extra pounds <clears throat> for this config. Uh, my station has a, I'll be using a random wire today, and I basically built one using an LDG 9 to 1 Unin. So we got that baby in there. I grabbed some feed line because I forgot this the other day. So you could probably go with a lighter feed line. This whole kit, by the way, is about 13 extra pounds um, over my normal um, loadout. Here's our battery, big old brick. Um, got the tuner. Um, it's an MFJ tuner. And the great thing about this is it's perfectly, it works great with the uh, 857 and the 891 from Yesu. Um, you put the communication cable in there and, uh, yeah, you just press the button on the radio and get yak. And so we got that guy. Of course, we have the radio itself. Got that in here. And this is hard to do with one hand. <laughs> so there's our radio. Um, we have a jumper cable for the um, tuner. And then we have power cable right here in this outer box and the communication cable for the tuner. Ah, see if I can open this over here. Oh, and an important piece here is this key, which I kind of like. Um, it's magnetized. All right. So pull this guy out. I've got a little bit of communication wire here, and then here's our paddles. So we'll try those guys today. I have my Begali's with me, but um, you may notice that every time I do a particular loadout, I like building a you know, complete kit with everything you need in one bag, battery and all, and um, along with paddles, um, which I've collected over time, and um, then I have a complete station I can just grab and go. So this is my heavier loadout. Um, I <laughs> typically don't, I have packed it. Um, and it's a lot of fun, by the way, to pack that, as I've said, uh, to the top of a mountain during a contest or whatever. You know, it's, um, I carried pretty much the same thing, the Yesu 891. Um, geez, for over a year, had a great time with it. So. Anyway, we're gonna get on the air. Let me get the station set up. Um, I also brought a heavy duty um, uh, push up pull, mainly to hold the random wire because it is much heavier and um, that pretty much guaranteed you're gonna get up with that and you won't snap it. 
unless you do something stupid and then yeah that's gonna happen it'll be me so we're gonna get it set up here get the chair out see if we can't get on the air all right so we got the operating position set up here um, I have that pole set up on the other side of the dead trees there it's about 70 feet random wire the counterpoise uh, coming off of this is about 17 feet um, so there's our little nine to one there's a radio with the ATU attached. Um, the other thing that this particular configuration setup is the radio will power the antenna tuner. So, uh, with that, oh, yeah, I'm here at the captain's chair here. And we have the guard dog over there who's keeping a nose out for anything. Um, we're at our operating position here. You can see I got my chair set up. The auto, um, antenna tuner, which is powered by the radio, um, and there's a con link, so I can just press the tune button here. Um, that is tied into our 9 to 1 Unin and goes up to a tree back there. So we're going to get on the air here, and I'm going to try 10 meter first, uh, 10 meter um, CW. So, like the um, 817, you change the bands with buttons, you change the mode with buttons, and a few other things that we've already gone through. Okay, we are on um, Whiskey 7 Alpha AP 007, uh, one of my favorite summits here. It's beautiful, easy to get to, and uh, yeah, so we're just getting set up here, and I'm going to spot myself on 10 meter, see if it's open today. Yesterday, the band conditions were unbelievably horrible. Dale and I could not hear anybody. I'm gonna lock the dial because it's super easy to bump. Tune. And we're tuned up one to one now. And there's our keyer working. Uh -oh. We may be too close to digital. Let me move down a little bit to 28054. We'll tune one more time just to make sure we're dialed in here. And uh, SWR is flat. All right, we're good. We're gonna get on the air here at Okay, that's Dale, 5-9. It's working. <laughs> but I'm not getting anybody else here. Let's see what we can do. CQ, 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 N1 CLC calling CQ, CQ for any station, anywhere. Alpha Alpha 7, Oscar Yankee. Alpha Alpha 7, Oscar Yankee, thanks for helping me test. Make sure this thing's actually working. <laughs> I got you, 5-9. Oh yeah, you're 5-9 here. Big DX today. And we'll use the, the coarse tuning knob to get to 21.3. 300. Here we go. 21.300. Uh, that'll put us squarely in the uh, sideband for 15 meter. Let's hit the tune button. Tune's right up. Flat SWR. 
CQ, 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 this is N1 CLC calling CQ, CQ. For parks on the air, summits on the air, any station, anywhere. Alpha Delta 4, Juliet X-ray. Alpha Delta 4, Juliet X-ray, got you 5-9 up here on the mountain. Uh, thanks for the calling. Uh, sounded good. QSL, I have you about 5-9 Gulf Alpha. Thank you for the park and the summit. QSL, QSL, man, have an awesome day. 73, thank you. 73, this is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air, park's on the air. Whiskey Bravo 8, United Sugar Alpha. Okay, I have a uh, Whiskey Bravo 8, Uniform Sierra Alpha. Good morning, sir. Got you 5-9 on the mountain. I think I caught 5-9. Uh, all of a sudden, the, uh, the band noise caught you. Uh, you're about a 5 Five to five six. Let's just say five six in Ohio. Five six Ohio. Uh, can you give me the park number? Good. Kilo eight November Echo Echo. Good morning, sir. I got you at about a five eight on the mountain. Roger, Roger. About a five six to five seven into Western North Carolina. QSL, QSL. Thanks for the uh, contacts into Carolina, man. Appreciate it. Have an awesome day. You too, brother. Seven three. Seventy three N one CLC spot us. Summit's on the air, park's on the air. Kilo Quebec 4, India Alpha Mike. Kilo Quebec 4, India Alpha Mike. Good morning. I got you 5858 five, on the mountain. You as well. Thank you, Chris, for the 5859 North Carolina. Okay, we made some contacts on sideband CW with the uh, 857. Sounding great, the speaker's great. Again, this review is really all about using the radio. What's it like? Um, changing bands is easy. Um, changing the uh, keyer speed. I have it on one of the outside buttons, but you know, you, or you go down in the menus. I can flip the filter on and off. I have two filters actually and there's two Collins filters one for sideband and one for CW um, that are installed in the radio when I bought it it already had the sideband uh, mechanical filter in there so that was nice um, it gives you a little bit better uh, you can pull out weaker stations with it we got a full hundred watts um, so yeah made a whole bunch of contacts today um, we made soda and poda uh, contacts so I'll have to upload it to the POTA database, but uh, today we netted 43 contacts with three Summit to Summit, so a lot better than yesterday where we struggled for over an hour um, just to get, you know, 10 or I think 17 is what I ended up with because the band conditions were so poor yesterday, but we had still had fun. All right, so um, I've got it all packed up. I did find my short feed line, so I got a short one for the jumper to the um, tuner, the automatic antenna tuner, and then another kind of short one that will go from there to the antenna. So that's kind of nice. The entire station, battery, keyer, all the cables, the antenna tuner, the radio, everything goes uh, very nicely into this uh, Voodoo, uh, what the heck is this, Voodoo tactical bag. So I've got it all zipped up. Everything fits in there, uh, including the paddles and one of those little side pockets. And I have some earbuds in there too. I generally wear those, um, but I wanted you to hear what the speaker sounded like. So we left the mic on the outside there uh, rather than running it through uh, all my audio equipment. So that works out good. I think earbuds are great when you're on a summit with a bunch of other people. They don't want to hear all that racket they're trying to enjoy the great outdoors. So uh, with that said, uh, Ray is over there eating some snow. God, I think it's it's got to be over 65 out here. It's just been absolutely beautiful. When the sun comes out, it got just uh, a tad warm. So I was glad I had my hoodie to put over my neck. Um, but yeah, we're going to walk back to the car. Like I said, I think it's about a half mile down there. 
and uh, get out of here. So let's take it back to the uh, final uh, comments and stats on the Yesu 857 radio. Okay, so that was a fun activation. Um, the 857 is a lot of fun, especially if you're depending only on sideband. Um, it just gives you a little bit more punch, more likely to get uh, your four contacts minimum for SOTA, 10 for POTA. And, um, you know, when the band conditions are difficult or it's Sunday afternoon after a contest, it could be really uh, helpful. So, um, let's go over some of the stats of this thing and wrap it up. So the scorecard, um, the radio is pretty heavy. As you can see, 4.6 pounds for the radio, two pounds uh, for the ATU, uh, three and a half pounds for a 12 amp hour battery. You need a bigger battery, uh, in, theoretically, so that it will support the, um, the power draw on this thing, which I think is 22 amps at full power. So um, it's fairly heavy. For some that's on the air, um, I give it a score of D because it just, you know, compared to other radios, uh, you're feeling it as you're going up the summits. So, <laughs> um, but hey, it's doable. I did it for over a year with pretty much the same loadout, just with an 891, which I said we'll cover later. Um, there's a size info for you. It's, it's bigger than the 817. Um, bands, you know, I'm going to give it an A+. Plus. It runs everything and two meter, which we didn't do any two meter contacts on it. Um, and at that location, it's probably not the best for doing two meter. But I have done two meter from a summit uh, that I packed it up to uh, near me um, and made, I think it was 160 mile contact way north of Los Angeles uh, and had the guy 5'9". So I basically ran the cable out to a Yagi that was set away from me. Uh, so I wouldn't radiate my brain too bad. Um, and yeah, it works great for a two meter. Um, and the other cool thing is if you want to run two meter CW or two meter sideband, you can probably do it with this radio. So that's another kind of bonus um, and certainly would be a fun thing to do from up there. Um, usability, there's lots of menus, but the base functionality is on the dials. I'm going to give it a B. Um, it's it's right up there with my top radios. Um, all the key functionality that I use is right there on the front panel, um, on the three the three core buttons. So one of them is the tuner button, which I hit when I, especially for using a random wire. Um, another one is faxed access to the key or speed. So I run 24 when I'm. Uh, activating just because it takes so long to get my call sign out but if I'm chasing I'll generally turn that down a little bit and try to match whoever the activator is so um, so that they can copy me um, and then the last one in on there is to turn on and off the, the uh, digital bandpass filter that's built into this thing which is pretty good so it just gives you a little bit of extra uh, noise control I can flip over pretty quickly to get to the digital noise reduction um, I don't use that as much um, but yeah, the, the radio has tons of capability in it, and I like that it has all the buttons on it um, pretty much that I use, you know, bands up and down and uh, mode, etc. Um, you So that covers usability. Power utilization is right there in front of you if you want to geek out on that. It uses a lot of power, so you have to carry a much bigger battery. You can't just carry a little uh, four double A's and expect this thing to put out 100 watts. <laughs> So that adds the weight, in fact, a whole three and a half pounds. Um, filtering is A, maybe even A plus, because I, it, the, the radio from the person, one of the person I bought it from, put the uh, sideband mechanical filter in it. I bought the CW filter, the 500 hertz filter, and installed that. So it has really good filtering in addition to um, the other noise reduction and bandpass filters. Um, it has, you know, speaker and headphone jack, etc. So I give it an A on the filtering and sound quality. It sounds really good. Um, and then fun factor. This is a tough one. Uh, the weight pulls the fun meter down for hiking. So if you're hiking with this thing, um, certainly you're feeling it. Um, but again, I just want to stress that I've hiked 
several summits with this loadout and some very long summits uh, with this and it's totally doable clearly um, the MFJ an antenna tuner which is another couple pounds because it's metal the reason why I use that instead of maybe a plastic ATU is it has it's it draws power from the radio and it's fully integrated so the front panel I can kick off the tune so to me that just kind of trumps um, you know a little bit lighter ATU um, so the other thing is, you know, you throw the battery in there. The other thing that adds to the weight, and this is, this is something that's pretty much optional, but I have a much heavier duty mast uh, because I lay up much heavier wire with a longer random wire. Now there are other setups that you can do without a mast at all, or you can go with a lighter mast um, with like a link dipole. So I can go back to my little tiny one um, and, and do that. The mast is probably, you know, at least a couple of pounds. It's a pretty heavy duty, but I'm not going to break it. Um, so I generally take that. This loadout is typically for when I do drive ups um, or POTA, and I can just pull it out of the car and set it up. So weight in this case is a little bit less important um, as I go on because I have lightweight solutions. But if there's a sideband contest, you can have a lot of fun on top of a mountain with this guy. So that's why I highly recommend it. So with that, um, I'm going to call it a review. This Again, this isn't a technical review. It's, hey, does this thing work for soda? And the answer is clearly yes. And uh, it is a lot of fun. So anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I'll put all the reviews into a playlist on this channel. Um, if you go to hamninja.com slash radios, that'll put you right into the playlist. So um, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Have an awesome day. Okay, there you have it. We did some, uh, made some compacts. <laughs> compacts. What is a compact anyway? Okay, there you go. We've made a few uh, compacts on compacts. <laughs> yeah, we made some compacts. You know, <laughs> incredible. Let's uh, take it back to the. Um, I forgot what I was doing. Take two. <laughs> we'll see if we can get this right.